Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and knife collecting and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a giant mouse slippy another cool pocket deployer, and we take a look at my favorite flippers. Uh, but first, let's get into a pocket check. And speaking of flippers, I have here one of my all-time favorites and one of my all-time least favorites. You'll see what I mean in a second. So this is the uh, XM24 from Rick Hinderer Knives. This is not the current run that's out. This is, I think, maybe the original or maybe the Gen 2. It is way pre triway pivot. And uh, it's one of my prize knives because they're very hard to find. And I found this uh, at a time when I, I was just very lucky to find it, got a you know reasonable price on it, and then began to doll it up with this uh, cool scale and everything. Uh, but the reason I say one of my least favorite flippers is that the shape of the XM flippers is just a little aggressive. You know, you got it's 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 pointed forward and it really forces you to push your finger into it. And uh, it's a little pointy. And no, that uh, Band-Aid is not from flipping the hinderer. I was uh, I'm, I'm a bachelor this week. I shouldn't say bachelor. I, I am a I am Mr. And Mrs. Mom and Dad this weekend as my wife is on a uh, girl's trip in nashville and uh so i had a chance to work on some knives it was great uh but i also had a chance to sand down two two fingers and it's very painful uh especially when washing dishes or cutting onions uh but in any case not from the rick hinderer flipper but a, the, a flipper design that i i kind of like in the open position because it really works great as a guard which i believe was really its original intention i think the flipper was an assist but the real intention was to have a finger guard there. Um, if I'm, I, I might be mistaken about that. Uh, but, uh, but just given the detent that they put on the earlier flippers, that's kind of my impression. So um, wouldn't mind it being rounded off. And what do you know? The Project X flipper, the newest uh, knife design from Rick Hinderer Knives, uh, which is still in prototype phase, but it looks like he heard the call and he rounded off uh, the top of the flipper. It still has that forward uh arch but the point it, it, it gives you more surface area on the top that's rounded and jimped uh four finger purchase so it'll be a more comfortable flipper and that will be my excuse for laying down whatever they whatever they're gonna ask for it i'm i'm gonna buy that damn knife okay next up my fixed blade uh today is a new one uh well i showed it off last week this is my bright for war uh quiken i'm always a little uh, hesitant to say that word because I want to say Quaken, but I think it might be Quiken. Uh, a beautiful fixed blade knife uh, made by Josh Mason. There's his maker's mark. It's a nice, nice looking maker's mark. Beautiful knife. He's got that's tiger ray skin underneath the Sukamaki wrap here, which has, uh, I'm a big fan of the alternating peaks and valleys for grip. They are so grippy. People who haven't uh, held in hand a uh, a Japanese wrapped handle like this with the epoxied lace and everything. Uh, it is shockingly grippy and sure. Uh, even without this Turkish knot here, I would feel very uh, up here at the Ricasso to stop. It's a little guard if you can't see what I'm saying, but I would feel very confident without that guard on there about not sliding forward because of this. Now you'll notice at the tip of the blade, I have begun a patina. I, I'm going to patina this knife uh, and see where we go with it. It is 1095. It is almost zero ground. He zero grinds his blades and then takes back the uh, profile just a little bit and then puts the edge on. And they are screamingly sharp. I've used this knife a lot. It's actually a very comfortable neck carry, uh, which is surprising to me because it's longer than I typically uh, and heavier than I typically prefer to carry around the neck. But this has been carrying like a dream. It's a great sheath uh, that it comes in, too. Uh, but uh, so very sharp. And I've been using it a lot. And I think I'm, I'm going to put like a steak patina on it. So I have to I have to eat some steak soon. That's my excuse uh, to lay down the steak money. 
and uh, I'm going to cut it with that blade and see where it goes. I love a 1095 food patina. And if I don't like it on that knife, I'll polish it off. The only thing I don't want to do is polish off the maker's mark. So I got to be careful about that. Okay, last thing uh, carrying today. Yes, the DeMarco Liberator. This is my uh, my G10 knife shaped object, Picol shaped object uh, that I carry on me. It's just a little super lightweight uh, get off of me uh, device. It's also a fun way to kind of train uh, using ha having one of these kind of knives in hand because it's light and yeah, it you could do a lot of damage with it, but the edges are only sharp in the most superficial way. Uh, you're not going to be cutting cheese with this thing or anything. Uh, so it's a great lightweight, uh, device. I tried to get my uh, wife to take this with her to Nashville and she, she loved the idea, but then she got all, all, uh, you know, TSA paranoid. She's not, uh, she wasn't checking her bags. She didn't want to get pinched for it. Uh, so you will see uh, down the line a little bit that I am taking this a little bit further. I started a metal version of this, and uh, I can't wait to finish it. All right, so this is what I was carrying today, the XM24 in Bowie, uh, an older generation. Not sure which exact generation, uh, maybe Gen 1. And uh, the Quaken or Quaken by uh, Josh Mason who goes by Bright for War on Instagram. And then the DeMarco Knife and Tool, we'll call it uh, Liberator. The Liberator. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Lovely. In G10. And uh, that is my carry. What is your carry? Let me know. Uh, comment below. And then if you haven't, subscribe. You know, what does it cost you? Uh, you just see my face in your, in your queue every once in a while. And also um, hit the notification bell. Because when I upload new videos, it'll let you know. And you don't want to be behind. All right. Uh, another thing you can do if you're interested in supporting the show is go to Patreon. Uh, we have different levels of support there. We're going to start, uh, we're going to add a ludicrous level, I think, uh, just for fun. Uh, and uh, But you get a lot of uh, extras when you go to Patreon. Uh, one of the main things, and my favorite extra, is the um, interview extras you get. So uh, go over here. You can scan it right here on your phone and uh, go to Patreon, check us out. The knifejunkie.com slash Patreon if you're not going to scan it. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So, uh, lurking around knife news as I do all the time, uh, saw a cool story about a an OEM that's. Uh, that's uh, starting to make knives under their own label. But this is not in China. This is in America. Uh, this is Heed Industries. And uh, it's Travis Godfrey, who's a, a knife designer, been in the game for 17 years, or since he was 17. Uh, so that's about 15 years, I guess, if my math is correct. And uh, he started out making parts, kind of like TRM, you know, making parts and, um, and different things for... Um, different pieces and fittings for custom knives and custom knife makers uh, who are doing mid-tech stuff. So he's one of the guys behind the mid-tech, uh, uh, you know, movement here in the American knife scene. And he's ready to, you know, he made a, a knife in 2015, a, a uh, Bally song, and he's coming back with another one. And this one is actually pretty cool. You don't hear me talk too much about Bally songs. I like them, uh, but, but it's uh, kind of outside my my real area of expertise and interest. Uh, but he's got one coming out called the Sea Knight. And one thing I do know about Bally songs, and 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 it's probably my favorite feature, is that a uh, traditional Bally song, like uh, if you're making one in good form, it's four and a half inches long the blade. So this is a four and a half inch long harpoon clip point in 154 cm. It's a very uh, interesting looking blade. Uh, but when you look at the handle, that's where the real area of interest comes in. This is a, a titanium handle. And if you look at the center of both uh, both handle sides, you'll see a slot cut out. And dovetailed into the slot are two weighted uh, nuts that slide back and forth within that channel and lock down using a proprietary uh, screwdriver that they send you. But basically what you can do there is alter the balance of your different handles uh, of your of both of your flipping handles 
And this is something that comes in for the real Bally boys, so to speak, the real uh, lovers of Bally song, uh, flipping and tricks and stuff like that. Uh, this knife here will allow you to adjust your balance. And, and to me, I, I would imagine like intuitively, it makes sense to me that that is a huge factor in Bally song flipping. Am I right? Uh, like I would imagine when you're testing out a new Bally song, um, at blade show and you're endangering everyone around you by flipping this thing around and doing your tricks. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, that you're really paying attention to how that knife is balanced. And if you love the knife and you love the blade and the design, I mean, it's very, you know, it's, it's got a cool design to it. You might want it, uh, and then really like it because you can, you can choose your own balance. Uh, so anyway, uh, what do you think? Is this, is, are you a Bally song person, A and B? Is this a good idea? Uh, I look at it and I'm like, wow, Bally songs uh, have come all this way without this so far. Is it needed? And, uh, you know, part of me, the, the part of me that only likes margarita pizza is like, uh, you know, I don't care if it's delicious. It's not pizza if you put pineapple on it. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. It's like, uh, uh, We've come this far without having, to, uh, you know, adjustable balance on our ballet songs. Uh, why do we need it now? But that's innovation, right? And maybe this is something whose time has come. Maybe this starts a trend. So I don't know. What do you think? Are you a ballet song uh, enthusiast? And is this a valuable thing? Is this value added? Uh, I think it's cool. So Heed Industries is what they're called. Heed Industries. And uh, this knife is, uh, it's, uh, where, when is it coming out? Oh, I think they'll be uh, debuting it at Blade Show in June. So, yeah, Heed Industries, and it's the Sea Knight. Kind of a cool name. Uh, there's a great helicopter that's the Sea Knight. Right? Okay, next up is Giant Mouse. Uh, Giant Mouse, you know them. Uh, that's a joint, it's a collaboration knife company between Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnes from Denmark. And together, you know, they have their very individual, unique uh, styles. And together, they have a unique individual style when they design together. And it's giant mouse, and you can always identify a giant mouse. And handsome, rugged styling, I would say, with um, kind of refined lines and rustic uh, materials or, or a rustic feel to them. Well, this is their new slip joint. And it's a 2.75 inch M390 blade. It's made by Best Tech. So all of that is awesome. Look at this. It is 100% ambidextrous. Uh, you can flip the wire clip to the other side. It's got nail nicks on both sides. Everything about it is ambidextrous. Uh, so a, except maybe the adjustment on the pivot, but that's, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Probably more excited than any of their other um, folders, uh, which, to be fair, I have never had. Uh, they all run just a little bit small, and and uh, for my for my taste, that's always been my excuse. But for a slip joint, this looks perfect. And I gotta say, look at that handle. That handle is gorgeous. The blade is uh, a a very uh, svelte and classy. It looks more like a spear point to me than a drop point. Looks like that point is totally center line, and the and the spine and the edge looks symmetrical to me. Uh, so it's a beautiful blade, fully flat ground, M390. You know it'll do awesome. But when I look at that handle, which will come in either um, copper or micarta, it just looks amazing. The overall profile is beautiful, but also the contouring. Mm -mm -mm. It looks like the first giant mouse I might have to uh, get 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 in get behind the wheel of. I'm sorry. It's called the Farley. Uh, F-A-R-L-E-Y. Maybe that's the Fairly, but Farley. And then, of course, I think of Chris Farley, whom, who, who I love for sure. Uh, so, you know, a great knife, great actor, comedian, the Farley from Giant Mouse. Uh, so they are taking a stab at the slip joint. And uh, that's coming soon. Uh, speaking of coming soon, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, the state of the collection, we look at another awesome folder pocket catch that I got much needed in this case. And then we'll take a look at my favorite flippers. Uh, not always the biggest flipper guy, but when I get into the mode, I am into the mode. And I've been kind of being judgy with my collection. And I, I've called out my 10 favorite to flip. So that's all coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast.
And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. There are a couple of aftermarket pocket catches that I've talked about in the past. Uh, the first and foremost is the uh, right here, the Snaggletooth MF, uh, originally made for cold steel knives, but then quickly caught on for all knives that have removable thumb studs. This will mostly fit. It, it, it is an aftermarket. It is a piece of engineered or machined. Uh, in this case, aluminum. They also do plastic molded uh, that fits onto the knife, and you can cam open the knife as you as you pull it out of your pocket like an Emerson Wave. I just recently got and was showing off this five by five Combat Solutions pick pocket, and it goes on the Yojimbo Two, a dedicated. I mean, you can use this as an EDC knife. It makes a fine EDC knife, but it is intended as a self-defense knife. And what better uh, feature to have on a self-defense knife that you're supposed to have in hand quickly uh, than a, a pocket catch like this? So I got this very enthused about this. But one knife in my collection that I, I, given all of the circumstances surrounding it, it, it's shocking to me that it doesn't have a wave. And I, I almost feel like it was done on purpose so that another round could be put out eventually with a wave and, and create a whole nother market. And maybe that's me just being conspiratorial. But uh, that knife is the Emerson Elvia, uh, the collaboration knife with Ed Calderon uh, based on his fruit knife. And it's a Pical style knife that you're supposed to draw in the worst of situations and sewing machine into someone and it's it's got the tip down and the edge in and it's all combative uh but the emerson elvia does not have a wave on it emerson knives is known for what the wave wave feature and what is the wave feature known for it's known for putting the blade open and live in your hand as soon as it's drawn out of the pocket so you can defend yourself because emerson knives are all based on that concept defending yourself and um, you know tactical situations, etc. So why on earth would you would you make a knife that is explicitly for knife fighting? I mean, this is not an EDC blade, a knife that is explicitly for that purpose. Why would you make it without the wave? If you are the wave people, uh, I'm sorry, I need an answer, <laughs> and I've asked and uh, was not satisfied. But uh, so I had to seek one out, and uh, I found one kind of randomly i was looking at uh, other knife pages on instagram you know the people i love to follow look like to look at their kit and this guy had one i don't even remember who it was um but i he was nice enough to tag the maker and i followed the tag and uh found danielle lovre yeah, this is this came in the package uh, i'll show it it's a, it's a wax seal with the l classy gent i got to say um, thank you. Handwritten. Very nice. I like that. D. Lovre, I think. Lovre. Sorry. Um, and then he put this cool little linotype or woodcut. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but a cool little print that he made says catch hell. And it's a really cool image. I'm not much of a skull guy. This is a cool skull. It's like a devil skull. It looks kind of it's evocative of sort of south of the border kind of voodoo. I, I don't know. But I, I like it. Not voodoo. I don't mean voodoo. Uh, but you know what I mean. Uh, it looks like it's from another culture anyway. And I really love this this touch. But let's talk about the product itself. It's a piece of brass engineered uh, to fit into the slot on top of the Emerson Elvia to act as its wave. You know, it's like sometimes when your father ignores you. You have to go make a father out of someone else, uh, out of brass, perhaps. Um, I'm sorry. Th that was all Freudian. That was a Freudian slip. I didn't mean that, Ernest. <laughs> How could you have done this? I, I have seen pictures of this with the, with the um, wave. And in all seriousness, I most definitely will get it uh, if, if they ever make it. Um, you know, in a regular production run with the wave. This is such an excellent knife. And, you know, I haven't a, a, a devotion, a dedication to that, that designer. I just think Ernest Emerson's designs are so awesome. So 
uh, if you do and you have the Elvia and you think it's missing and uh, a blade catch or a wave, uh, check out Daniel Lovre uh, on on Instagram. I do apologize for my my over pronunciation L O V R E accent, whichever accent that is, Egu or Grave. I don't remember from high school French, which I immediately ditched for German. Okay, so uh, definitely check it out. So these are the three blade catches uh, that I'm smitten over. Uh, the, 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 the pocket catch, the pickpocket, and the snaggletooth MF. You should check them all out if you like the capability of opening the knife. And by the way, I, I think I could imagine uh, pocket deployment not just being handy for fighting and self-defense, but uh, for any kind of actual work. You're up on a ladder. You're pulling it out. Uh, pulling out your knife holding on to something pull it out it's open you cut you close it put it back in boom you don't have to take that extra step of using your thumb okay uh next is uh i, I just want to show off a couple I'm, I'm very proud of myself you know as i mentioned before uh, i had a chance to do some uh sort of grinding on my two by 42 craftsman which is unforgivingly fast and um and <laughs> You know, I'm 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 working with blunt tools here in terms of belts and 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 that kind of thing. Uh, you know, I just kind of went to Sears and bought a bunch of belts before they disappeared from from my location, and uh, I'm still working with those. But let me show you some of the stuff I made. So here is uh, here's one. This is a scrap knife. I had some old scrap stuff, uh, and it is a chisel ground. All of this is going to be chisel ground chisel ground long slender double-edged defensive knife uh we'll see i i gotta get these all heat treated now and i i think i'm going to uh ask alex steingraber if he's if his offer still stands he did the, my last batch over a year ago but he's a busy man so he probably doesn't do that anymore um next up is this kind of cool pickle knife now this thing was uh made from a um uh, a Warncliffe Karambit I made for someone, uh, and and I was trying to put the finishing touches, make it just a little bit better, and I totally screwed the whole thing up. So I ended up just grinding away and uh, came up with that. I think once it's got a uh, micarta or G10 handle and is fatter, it'll feel better in the hand right now. It's just like, eh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, here is my, here, I showed you this before the liberator here's my metal version of the liberator i just did this one uh this week oh, i did all of these this week but this one i was most proud of and this was most from scratch uh it's going to be double-edged but there are very steep chisel edges um this one the front one will be much sharper uh, or more keen and this one will be more of a tearing pulling cut uh type thing uh I swear to God, I, I drew it out on the steel and somehow it got bigger. So I might, uh, I might pair it back a touch, but I'm kind of liking it big. So, uh, last up, this is a true scrap knife, but I think it's really cool. I think it turned out, it's going to turn out great. So this is a tiny little Pical knife that will, again, once I have handle material on there and it's fatter, it will feel great in hand. It's got a uh, tip down, edge in, straight edge there. And it's, I still have that reaching forward sort of angle on it. Uh, it's got a swedge for penetration. And then I jimped here in case I want to use it like this. And I also jimped the pommel here. And, um, you know, I like pommel jimping. And I'm always saying no one does enough pommel jimping. So this is an area where I can control such a, a travesty. <clears throat> So I'm taking care of that right here at DeMarco Knife and Tool. Uh, no, uh, that all that being said, I'm I'm really enjoying this, and I I I'm gonna get myself back into doing this on some sort of regular schedule. Like I started doing it, and then uh, the the I don't know demands of life and some laziness crept in, and then the, the the extremely long waits for heat treating from some of the places I was sending it was was really killing my buzz. Uh, and then I was like, I'll get a heat treat oven, but I don't, I don't have a place to put it. And I don't want to put it in my shed and, and run, run a cable out there and 
have the whole shed burned down and all that. Like I just making excuses. So I'm going to get rid of those excuses, banish them and continue forward uh, because it's, it's like sculpture. And I went to school for all that kind of stuff. So I can do it. I can sculpt metal. I'm going to, I'm going to start making more knives. All right, let's talk about knives. I don't intend to make, and uh, it's amazing to me that uh, mere mortals make them in their, in their shops and garages. And I'm talking about folders. I'm talking about flippers. <clears throat> And I'm talking about my favorites in my collection. So what, what is what are the criteria for my favorite flippers? Well, I am finding that despite my sort of um, general feeling of, of like, well, if the crowd likes it, it can't be good. That's a bad, I, I miss out on a lot by thinking that way. Um, I didn't listen to Nirvana until Kurt Cobain killed himself uh, because I thought too many people like them. And then I was like, oh, hey, I just discovered this great new band, uh, Nirvana. What do you think of them? Uh, so that that's kind of how I am. Uh, but so I'm coming around to this. I do like fall shut action, but it's not necessary. It is not necessary. And you know what? It's not even necessary to have bearings. However, everything I'm showing here has bearings. So let's get started. First up, this is one of my newest favorites. Um, uh, this is the Off Grid Knives Rhino version two. This is a knife that uh, I have coveted for quite some time. My brother has this one, and uh, I really, really, really like the broad blade. To me, it looks it's evocative of a Winkler, and uh, I really like that. It's a long clip point, it's very tall grind, and uh, cuts like a dream ergonomically is is amazing but i love the flipper tab now before when i was uh, kvetching about the hinderer tab this is what i was thinking of that kind of rounded off it doesn't have to look like that it doesn't have to be a 100 percent semi-circle but that sort of rounded off top and not having the main point of interface with your finger be um, a point is very very nice and and this has a heavy blade it's on bearings and it just flies out and then you can just drop it back in with a with a slight nudge and that's what i like uh fall shut is nice i do like single nudge and then as you'll see uh in another knife i like it when you have to actually close it with your thumb too and it doesn't fall shut um, this one's kind of like that, but, uh, yeah, be sure to check out, uh, uh, we have an affiliate link with off grid knives, the knife junkie.com slash off grid, which was very nice of Carrie. Uh, Carrie's a great guy and uh, he lives out there in California, designs these awesome knives. Best tech makes them for a while. His elite series, uh, the scorpion, it was between this and the scorpion, um, but the reason I chose this over the Scorpion is, A, this is my favorite flippers in my collection, uh, but also the Scorpion, which is of his uh, elite line, so it's more expensive and, and a really refined knife. Uh, the one that I have was made by Wee Knives. Now they are made, all, all of his knives are made by Best Tech. And from what I can tell from other Best Techs I've handled, like for Vero Engineering and other knives, they are right up there. With, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, with Riot. Now, I, I hear some people moaning, and I know that there are probably some, uh, you know, some some real slender particulars that I don't know about. But all of the best tech knives I've been handling have been outstanding, and I didn't want to represent misrepresent the Scorpion by showing a wee knife because it's no longer a wee knife. But anyway, this thing is uh, a great knife and just a joy to flip. I love this knife. And if you like the design of that, but it's a little too much, uh, check out the Baby Rhino, which is way too little. But it's such a charming, awesome little knife. My wife has mine now, or I, I gave it to her, so it's hers, technically. But I can go take it whenever I want because I know where she keeps it. And what is she going to say? No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but anyway, it is a cute little knife, and it's the exact knife uh shrunk down by a percentage which usually doesn't work usually you have to accommodate for the size change or the scale change and reconfigure things to fit the human hand this knife shrank down perfectly and but he kept the width and that thick width 
is what makes this tiny little knife totally comfortable, manageable, and a joy to use. So check out the, the Rhino and, and the Baby Rhino. This one is from Russia. Well, designed in Russia, created, uh, manufactured in China. This is the Crystal Aurora. And this is a knife that I got from Russia with Levan. Uh, Levan, the cast Levan, and now he's got this really uh, cool and unique company where he uh, imports limited runs of knives designed and some made in Russia and sells them here. And that's how I got this. This is an Ivan Braganets design. Uh, let's see, where is it? Right there. And uh, this fuller in the center is what got me immediately. Uh, I tell the story. I remember laying in bed. It was a Saturday morning, and I don't usually do this, but I picked up my phone, and I'm like, I'm just going to lay in bed for a minute. Um, and uh, I saw this on Instagram, and I immediately bought it because he had just uh, done a drop of it. That big fuller is just, I don't know. It's so cool to me. And the the thing seems hollow ground or, or flat ground and hollow ground. And so behind the edge, it's got in just a tremendously thin slicey edge. But the reason I like this as a flipper is what I was talking about before. This one, you have to close. I mean, you can shake it closed, no problem. But it gives you just enough hydraulic resistance as you close it that it's got this super smooth and lovely feel. I, I know that might sound strange, uh, but it's it's a similar satisfaction I get from closing my Sabenza or my Umnumzan from Chris Reeve Knives. Just like a really, except this is on bearings and those are on washers. This is just a super smooth. So it jets out like it's on bearings and it closes like it's on washers. So it's the best of both worlds. Uh, in, in many ways, uh, but also just a fantastic knife, a great design. It's jimped all over the place, but it's covert jimping. This uh, line work here uh, on the side of the handle acts like jimping, and it it's also on the clip, makes it very easy to draw. This is a very thin, light, and uh, weight-reduced titanium frame lock, and so this makes for a great like gym shorts or pajamas knife. Uh, or or summer knife. I wore that. I carried that a lot during the summer. I got to avoid saying wear. It makes it seem too much like luxurious fashion. Next up, uh, American Blade Works. This is the Model One Version Five. Excuse me. Um, just an outstanding knife and um, uh, engineered and re-engineered to really kind of fit the hands uh not literally but fit the the likes and dis uh, to fit the likes of uh knife nerds and what do i mean by that this is the model one version five and um it is it has gone through it's now on six version six and that is where it is staying but uh this is a one-man band one-man shop and he as he was making this knife, it's gone through different iterations, aluminum handles um, and and different different uh, uh, pivots and such. And it's gone through all these changes and through feedback from the knife community. Um, this has been Michael Martin, the the sole proprietor of this company, has changed and perfected the knife. This thing. So this is the version five before the perfected version. And uh you know, it's hard to detect. I loved version three. I loved uh, many different versions of this knife. Uh, the five, though, I think he nailed it. And he went on to do uh, the version six. And it's some different materials, a little more contouring and uh, slightly different improved action. But this knife, I feel a real kinship towards because when I got it, it's got a blasted blade, a pretty heavily media blasted S35VN blade. And... At first, even though it has bearings, it was not the smooth. It was smooth, but it was not the most smooth. And um, I discovered that over time, through flipping it, through using it, this is a great user knife, and it's a little bit smaller than my preferred uh, preferred blade size, but it, it's so great 
that it doesn't matter. It's very thin and slicey, full flat ground. But I discovered through use and through obsessive flipping, uh, the bearings have worn a nice smooth track in that blasting and it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother. And this is another knife like, uh, like the um, uh, Crystal Aurora that jets out like a, like a uh, bearing knife and comes back in smoothly, more like a um, washer knife. I'm sorry, I'm starting to get uh, uh, brain salad going, or a uh, word salad happening in my brain. All right, I'm going to reset with something that is so easy to talk about because I love it so much. How was that? Was that a smooth segue? Uh, this is the Hinderer XM18. This is the triway pivot, my only triway um, yeah, I know first world problems, but I, I have, uh, I have five hinderer knives and this is the, the one triway and the others have flipper tabs that help you open it up. Um, but this one is a true pleasure to, to use because it's got a detent that is dialed in for flipping. And then it's got the triway pivot and I left the, um, bearing pivots that it shipped with and, I got to say, though, it does have a pretty crisp uh, detent. And while I'm using it here with my left hand, which I rarely do, I am very much noticing the pointy flipper tab because I don't have much of a callus on my left hand. And yeah, man, that is <laughs> that's a little bit a little bit pointy there, Rick. Uh, but hey, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> uh, I, I will never round it off on my own, but I'm happy that the Project X will be rounded. Oh, I do have one um, that is a XM24 on washers. Maybe I should have brought that one out because that is smooth as silk, hard to fail, and uh, is not such a stiff detent set for a flipper that it hurts my 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 delicate little finger. I know, I know. I should I should be ashamed because I should be a tough knife guy, but I don't know, man. The pointy flipper tab. All that being said, this is one of my absolute favorites, and and I love the triway pivot, and I I love the options, and I do look forward to getting more triway knives in the future. And this this is a this is a dear one, DLT exclusive, by the way. Next up, I could say this about all the Civivis I have, which is six at the moment, uh, but this one definitely takes the cake. This is the Asticus. They are all really, really great flippers. You know, they have their action and their detents dialed in 100%. But this one is especially good, especially smooth. It's my oldest Civivi, so it could be because I've used it the most, but it came out of the box incredibly smooth. And I think part of why I like this and why this beats out all my other Civivis for favorite flipper is it's got a long blade. That blade is just about four inches long, and that aids not only in whipping the blade out, but also in bringing the blade in. You know, the, the larger blade will fall shut easier. I'm doing this with my left hand. That was pretty smooth, I got to say. Look at that. So you, you can see it just drop, and then my thumb is stopping it on the... Um, so nice fall shut action. Slim, slender knife. Uh, totally weight relieved in there. A um, little bit of, uh, this is black G10. Now they made this with copper, wood. I would love to have this knife with a wood overlay. Um, uh, I do believe they did micarta and different different colors of G10. This one is black. This was a gift from my brother-in-law, James. And what a cool gift indeed. Uh, nice, broad, about an inch wide blade and high hollow grind. Thin, slicey, sharp sharp knife and just a pleasure to flip and I, I find that with most of my civivis uh, but some of them have you know some issues like the riffle is my favorite civivi but it's not my favorite to flip because it is not my favorite to close there is not good access to the lock bar and that's part of the experience next up is the smallest in the group this is a three inch blade this is the usa made texas made tactile knife company rockwall flipper this little 
puppy is such a, such a lovely little knife. Now this this was made and designed to fit inside an old Wrigley's five stick chewing gum pack. So it's small, it's compact, it's slender, it's sleek, and it's beautifully engineered uh, by Tactile Knife Company. Tactile Knife Company uh, is an offshoot of the Tactile Turn Pen Company uh, out of Texas, renowned for their um, lathing and turning of titanium and milling too. They got heavily into milling. And this knife was their first and man alive. What a great way to come out of the gate with a new knife. Excellent jimping, incredible blade shape. I love this swedged drop point. I'm not much of a drop point guy. Uh, you know, I like more exciting blade shapes, exciting in, in air quotes, but this is the most exciting drop point because it comes to a very nice, acute and gradual point. That belly is not uh, that belly up front is not extreme. And so it is a great penetrating, puncturing knife. This is great for op opening clamshells, especially stubborn like tool clamshell packages or electronic clamshell packages. This was a great this is a great toy knife. If you've ever dealt with the frustrations of opening modern toy packaging, uh, this is the tip is sleek and slender enough to get under those frustrating little tiny zip ties and rubber bands uh, without any trouble. And it's sharp as hell. But the flipping action is gr is really exceptional, especially for here. I'm going to do that backward. I like that. I'm patenting to the this is the left handed, the left hand backhand knife uh, blade drop. Uh, in my experience, the smaller, lighter the blade, the less, the more difficult it is to get this sort of action, this sort of easily drop shut action because you don't have the weight there to assist. This one is so dialed in and so smooth um, that that light little three inch blade drops without a problem. Now you might be saying, Bob, that is uh, that is an issue that has been worked through in modern knives. Uh, the small light blades now behave just like the big heavy blades. Maybe that's the case, and I just don't know. Uh, but in any case, I would say the Tactile Knife Company, they really have it dialed in. Now they have this with the thumb stud now, and I love thumb stud bearing knives. Uh, I might have to get that. I, I say that about everything here. I might have to get that. Oh, I'm, I, it's like a threat. Oh, I'm I'm gonna have to get this. I'm I'm like putting it into the public record just so that uh, you know when my wife sees that package, I'll say I, I announced it to the world. Didn't you hear it? <laughs> Didn't you hear it? it was like about 42, 43 minutes into the show. No, you, okay. Well, wow, things have really changed around here. Okay, next up is the Finch Knives Cimarron. Finch Knives known for their smooth little flippers. Uh, th those are actually uh. A great example of little flippers with great action. But this Cimarron is uh, at 3.4 inch, at a 3.4 inch blade, 3.5 inch maybe blade. It is their smoothest, I mean, that I have. I don't have a, a few of them, but look at that. I mean, this thing is so fun to play with. This is one uh, that is a great stash away knife. It's a, it's a decent size. Look at it compared to the xm18 it's about the same size lengthwise um but so you get you get the reach and all of that and a large knife and and the large handle size but you can stash this uh in your back pocket next to your wallet and barely know it's there this is a great knife for back pocket carry uh in my opinion because that blade uh does not exceed the contours of the handle kind of like a quaken or that kind of uh, folder. And so it's all encapsulated within the profile of the handle. And that's a thin handle, 100% neutral, 150% comfortable, uh, no matter how you turn it. It's a, it's a really, this is a really great knife. And I, I think it kind of doesn't get as much play as the other, um, finches. Maybe it's not as charming. I think it is the color combinations on the G10 on this model are really cool. So that this is, and they're all inspired by sleeping bags and jackets that, uh, the gentlemen who uh, run this company, uh, Steve and Spencer have for their camp. You know, they're, they're very inspired by camping and out 
fishing and outdoor stuff. And so this is the color combination of like a sleeping bag, yellow and gray. They have a, a olive drab and orange, which I love. They have a blue and green, like a Kelly green and a royal blue, which is gorgeous. And then a black and red, I think. So uh, the, the charm of this knife, the quote unquote charm of this knife is maybe a little less uh, overt. I think their knives are overtly charming. Um, but this one to me flips the best. I mean, it is buttery smooth. I'm going to hold it up here so you can see buttery smooth and a great, uh, a great blade shape, by the way, that is a great drop point. Excellent jimping on these knives. Uh, everything about this Finch Cimarron is, is pretty excellent. Plus it's got 14 C 28 N, which is a magnificent budget steel. Let's put it that way. Magnificent midline budget steel or something like that. I don't know. The sands are always shifting. All right. Next up is another one from Russia with Levon. Uh, this one is also a Braganets design. This is the made by a company called Arcona, and it is the Nettle. It is the one front flipper you will see in this list. It is the one front flipper you will see in my magical chest of knives. I have had a few in the past. Uh, but this is the one that will always stick around. Um, and I realize, actually, there are two reasons why this will always stick around. I love it. It's a, 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 an awesome example of a, a front flipper. I have no problem using it or actuating it. And I, you need zero practice or familiarity uh, to make it work, even left-handed. Um, I, think, I think front flipper design, like all design, has evolved over the past five years. And I would imagine that most of them are now uh, equally easy to use. But um, so I would keep it just for that. But I also uh, it was a gift from Levon, which I greatly appreciate. So I would never get rid of it for that reason also. Um, but it's a great cutter. This is K110, Bowler K110, which is uh, like European D2. And. This is kind of a, a denim looking, but it's more of a linen micarta contoured in cross section and grooved. But just the action is just sickeningly smooth. It's the kind of action that I that makes me suspicious from time to time. I'll, oh, is there a blade? Did I incorporate? Uh, you know, did I make blade play in here by too much use? Nope. Nope. It's just that smooth. So an awesome, awesome knife. No, I cannot make that blade hole work, either as a spidey flicker or as... No, can't make that work. I don't think it's intended as an opening uh, method. I think it's a design flourish. The Arcona Nettle from Russia with Levon, designed by Ivan Braganets. Such a, such a great knife. Comfortable in hand, too, and very light. Very light. These Russian knives are quite light, these Russian knives. The only two Russian knives I have. Okay, next up is a Riyadh-made knife, and uh, it is one of their in-house knives, and it will always stay with me because I just think it's the coolest Tanto ever. This is the K2, a knife that has, uh, when it first came out, came out in this great handle, this uh, bronzed sort of, excuse me, dragon dragon style handle looks like a dragon to me and then the other one other one was a blue anodized uh with with diamonds on the handle evocative of the diamonds you see on this kind of japanese wrap of course it's a japanese knife and that that was the uh i mean japanese you know tanto uh japanese blade that was the original one i wanted i wanted the one that had the the uh handle evocative of this they didn't have it, and I wanted this, and I was afraid it would never be available again, so I got this. And really, I feel like I lucked out. I, I In retrospect, so much I like this handle so much more than the blue one. Uh, this was probably the first ultra-smooth knife I got uh, besides, the, um, besides the SOCOM Elite, which was a very early uh, bearings knife. I didn't even realize it had bearings. I just thought it was... I was like, man, this thing is so smooth. I can barely control it. Uh, when I slow roll, I didn't realize it was intended for a thumb flick, you know. Uh, but this one is just ultra smooth. 
and it's that Riot build. I only have a couple of Riots. I have this one and the and the um, Antimatter by uh, Arcane, and they're just built so amazingly. But this, being an in-house design, makes it special to me. Uh, it also ha features this incredible thin hollow ground S35 VN blade. Ow! I just <laughs> I just got my my finger on the tip there, and uh, a flat ground wedge tip front with that swedge. This thing is a thing of beauty and just a pleasure to flip. The first flipper I got where uh, I just really came to appreciate bearing action. Oh, yeah. Okay, one more. And this thing takes the cake for smooth. This is probably the smoothest in here, uh, though that's kind of a you know hard thing to measure. But just my hands feel it, and it is, yes, it is my Monterey Bay Knives Turbo. Now, this knife I had, uh, it was totally plain Jane, sent it to the knife modders, Lindy and Richie, and they just killed this thing. That high voltage green, which uh, uh, doesn't play well with the green in the background, but it is a insane dragonfly eye green. That's that's what we're calling it. And look at this. And and then I also had it acid stone washed, and they put an incredible wicked edge on it. But look at this. I mean, uh, an absolute guillotine. You know what, Jim? Let's go to the wide shot because I think that's the only way this is going to come through. I mean, okay, let's let's try it like this. It's it is the most fall shutty knife I have. Once it passes that that detent, which comes early, it just phew. so all right. I could do that all day, and you'd be like, uh, yeah, I get it. It's smooth. So this this thing is incredibly smooth, and it's a pleasure to to use. It's very sharp. It's got a great blade sh uh, shape and great blade geometry for a saber ground blade now i gotta say that wicked edge does help for sure uh, that they put on there i think they backed the edge up just a touch there made it a little bit broader and a little bit keener they also did uh um, they went to town on the on the backspacer and the clip gave it sort of a cosmic storm look you know like uh to me it looks like those images you see from the hubble telescope um especially when you put some Windex on it. Also, it just feels great. Ergonomically dreamy and designed by Peter Carey, who's not only a cool guy, but a, uh, someone whose designs I've admired ever since, uh, I guess, the the Rubicon. That was the my first exposure to him. And then I looked at his years and years and years of custom knife making before the Rubicon and uh, just an emblematic or iconic designer. Look at that. I mean, just so smooth. Uh, what do you think of my left-handed technique, huh? Pretty good? Pretty good? Let me know in the comments below. All right, I think I'm going to leave that there. Uh, my favorite flippers are the Rhino from Off Grid Knives, the Crystal Aurora, the American Blade Works Model 1 version 5, the Triway Pivot by Rick Hinderer Knives, Civivi Asticus, the Rock Wall by Tactile Knife Company, the Finch Cimarron, the Arcona Nettle, the Riot K2, and then the one that takes the absolute cake right here is the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo. Uh, as uh, it, it went away smooth, it came back smoother. What can I say? That is it. So be sure to check out uh, what we got coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. As always, we have our Sunday interview show. We have uh, Dennis Tyrell of Tyrell Knife Works. Now, if you haven't checked this guy out, uh, do a little homework beforehand. He does these amazing knife build videos on YouTube. Uh, Dennis Tyrell, he does two a week. And uh, I talked to him all about it. Great guy. I was so happy to meet him and uh, get to know about his process a little bit more. Uh, and then check us out tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.